Hi all, welcome back to the Simple Space Shooter tutorial. This week we're going to be focusing on creating our boss. So we'll start by creating a script. I'm calling it Big Boss, which you can call it whatever. Um, let's think about real quick what we want this boss to do. We're going to have it come in from the right side of the screen and travel to the left side of the screen and then go back and forth from the left to the right so the player has to dodge it. Uh, it's also going to be shooting a gun the entire time. And that'll be good for us, and that'll be it. So we want to make this big boss script derived from our spaceship class that you know and love at this point. We need to know two things. Uh, so we're going to serialize two fields. Um, they're both going to be vector threes, and those are the position that the boss is going to travel to on the left. And then the position the boss is going to travel back over to on the right. Then we need a boolean that's not going to be serialized and that's just going to keep track of whether we're going left or right at the current moment. We'll have more fields here as uh, once we implement shooting but for now let's just think about moving. So we're going to override our move function as always uh, protect override vo uh, vector 3 move and we're going to uh, start by checking if we're going left. If we are going left, we want to do a quick check to see uh, if we're within a certain distance, a little threshold distance of our final left position. If we are within that distance, we want to stop going left. We want to say going left is equal to false. To move left, we're going to modify our movement vector, the x on the movement vector. We're going to set that to our movement speed, so get movement speed. We're going to multiply it by the time dot delta time to smooth it out. And since we're going left, we're also going to multiply it by negative 1. For going right, which is what we do if m underscore going left is false, uh, it's really the same thing. Uh, is going left except we're not going to multiply by negative one and when we check our threshold our distance against the threshold we're going to be checking against the uh, m underscore final position right vector three and uh, if we are within that threshold we're going to be setting m going left back to true so that really takes care of all the movement that this uh, boss character is going to be doing uh, the next thing we want to start thinking about is uh, shooting. So just like with our player, uh, if you can recall, uh, we need to implement the I shooterable interface. And what we're going to do here is take really all the same code that we used for the player and uh, paste it back into here. Um, the only significant change we're making to the shooting code here is in the actual uh, void public void shoot function we're going to find uh, where it takes the input because if you can recall as the player uh, in that function we check for the fire button being pressed and we also check for uh, the rate of fire to make sure you're not just spamming bullets in this case we are only going to check for the rate of fire so the boss is going to be shooting as long as uh, well, as long as he's on the screen, uh, so that's the the changes we need to make to the shoot function itself. Uh, also, when we get the bullet, we want to orient it towards the player so that it it flies out towards the player no matter where they are on the screen. So in order to do that, we need to make a couple changes here. We need to add in a a private uh, private field for the player so our boss needs to know where the player is and you can see me here adding a helper function called get player and what that's going to do is uh, search for the player game object if we haven't and we're going to call that if we haven't already found the player game object so back when we get the bullet and we're setting its transform uh, what we want to do is not set its rotation the way we were doing that before. 
we're going to get the player game object if we haven't already. And what we're going to do is call the bullet transform dot look at. There's a look at function and we're going to feed it that player rm underscore player transform. And what that will do is orient the bullet towards the player no matter where they are on the screen. And if you can recall our, our actual bullet code, it just travels forward. So if we're looking towards the player, that means that the bullet's going to start traveling towards the player. And really that's everything we need our boss to do. Uh, so let's come back out and set up the game object. So you see I'm dragging our model in. This is the same way we set up the baddie game object and the player. We're going to create an empty game object to serve as the parent transform. And we're going to appropriately uh, rotate the actual model so that it's facing the correct dire uh, direction. I'm also going to mess around with the scale a little bit here. Uh, we want the boss to be fairly large on the screen. I settle at about a thousand on my scale. But uh, play around with that until you get something you're happy with. Once we're, we have the, uh, the parent, we're going to add our boss component to it, our big boss component. We want to make sure the health is something fairly large. Remember the bullets do about 100 damage a piece. Um, I'm going to have this guy be required to be shot a fair amount of times before uh, it blows up. So I'm going to set it to something like uh, 2,000. Seems pretty good. We want to make sure can move beyond bounds is checked because he's going to be going beyond the left and right side of the screen occasionally. We want to set the spaceship type to enemy. And we'll set our final positions left and right. So for the right, uh, 54 looks pretty good to where it's going to go on the right. And then negative 45 we can drag in the bullet prefab. For the spawn point, I'm just giving it its own transform, so the bullets are going to spawn out of the center of this boss vehicle. Uh, for the explode sound and explode particles, I'm just going to take the same particles and sound that are in the uh, player. So I've just copy and pasted that particle system into the boss and dragging it in. And I'm also going to copy and paste the audio source from the player for the explosions. And then the boss should be all set up. So let's try it out and see how it functions. So one thing I missed here is uh, we're gonna need to add a rigid body and box collider same as we did with the player and the baddies before. So we'll go ahead and do that. And we're ready to test again. And that seems to work pretty well. I'm going to tweak the time between shots to make it a little longer because it feels a little overwhelming as it is now. Um, and then I'm, I'm pretty happy with where that ends up. So next we want to edit the baddie spawner script to be able to spawn our boss at the end of the level. So we'll go ahead and start that up. We need to uh, add a... Uh, boss prefab so just like we did with the baddie except this time it's using our big boss script and then we need to add I'm gonna add a uh, a new enumeration and this is gonna help us distinguish between uh, the regular bad guy types and the boss types that we're spawning in so up at the top I'm gonna say public enum enemy type and I'm gonna have either normal or regular or boss and then in the attack move class, I'm adding a new uh, public enemy type and call it M enemy type. And I'm going to default it to be the regular enemies. And that way I don't have to change every single one of the waves that I've already created because they're just going to default to the regular. 
So now I can scroll down to where I've set up my waves, um, add a new wave for this boss. And uh, for the boss, I need to make sure that I set that new enemy type uh, field that we just added to the uh, attack wave class. And I don't need wave size anymore. I wanna make sure number of baddies is only one. Uh, the rate of spawn really doesn't matter. Uh, and I'm just going to tweak some of these starting values. Like starting Y I think can probably be 0. And uh, X at 70 is probably fine. Down in the spawn wave function, we now need to distinguish between whether we're spawning a regular enemy or a boss. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. So we're going to say if the attack wave enemy type is equal to boss, then instantiate the boss prefab. Otherwise, instantiate the regular baddie prefab. And as you can, re if you recall, on the baddie script, we added a special spawn function for setting up some of the uh, sine wave parameters uh, that we feed in from our attack wave. We don't need to do that for the boss. Uh, so, so we'll just have that in the uh, regular baddie spawning uh, code there. And so back out into the uh, Unity editor, we need to make sure we drag our boss prefab into the baddie spawner script uh, placeholder for it. And then we can delete our boss from the scene and, uh, and then we're, we're pretty much done, ready to go. So that's everything we need to do this time around. Um, so the game is almost done. We're going to have just some finishing touches next week. We'll add a menu and a game over state. And uh, yeah, we'll get this thing all wrapped up. So thanks for joining. Leave a like if you feel so inclined. If not, that's cool too. And we'll catch you next time. Bye.